In this video, we're going to talk about the protist in the supergroup Excavata. And this one makes me laugh because it sounds like a, a Harry Potter spell. Some general characteristics of the supergroup Excavated is that they are asymmetrical, unicellular, and have a feeding groove excavated from one side. And this is really where they get their name from this feeding groove. Some excavata are heterotrophic predators, others are photosynthetic, and they might be parasitic. The subgroups we're going to focus on are the diplomonads, parabasalids, and euglenozoans. The diplomonads have mitosomes, which are mitochondrial remnants, so they don't have mitochondria like other eukaryotic cells do. These mitosomes are involved in iron and sulfur metabolism. They are not used for cellular respiration like they are in other eukaryotes. These protists are anaerobic in that they can survive without oxygen. They have two similar but not identical haploid nuclei present. Remember, haploid means that they have one set of chromosomes instead of having paired chromosomes. They also have two pairs of flagella. You can see the flagella kind of sticking out here. And one example of a diplomonad is Giardia, which is an intestinal parasite that you can get from drinking water that is um, infested with this protist. The parabasalids get their name from a parabasal apparatus, which is just a modified Golgi apparatus complex um, with cytoskeleton fibers associated with it. For mobility, they have flagella, which we can see here. They also have the ability to ripple their membrane. So you can kind of see that on the side here. And that rippling kind of creates a bit of a current allowing them to swim through their environment. They also have a modified mitochondria called hydrogenosomes. The mitochondria do anaerobic chemical reactions that produce hydrogen gas, and that's where the hydrogen in hydrogenosome comes from. One example of a parabasalid is one specifically called Trichomonas vaginalis. And this actually causes a sexually transmitted infection known as trichomoniasis. It's more symptomatic in women, although male can get it, males can get it too and pass it on to their partners. And the presence of trichomonas vaginalis can increase a person's risk of getting other sexually transmitted infections. It can also lead to pregnancy complications and cervical cancer. Some forms of parabasalids are actually beneficial and they colonize the gut of ruminant animals like cattle and termites and it helps to digest cellulose and cellulose is just more commonly referred to as fiber. The euglenozoans can um, vary in their metabolic strategy. So some are parasitic, some are heterotrophic, some are autotrophic, and some are mixotrophic. Remember that parasitic just means that it is living off of a host and um, causing harm to the host in the process. Heterotrophic means that it is eating other organic compounds, so usually other organic um, organisms. Autotrophic means that it can make its own food either through photosynthesis or chemosynthesis. And mixotrophic means that they might be able to switch between one of these other um, forms of metabolism. So they might be heterotrophic or autotrophic depending on what the conditions are. And the two subgroups we're going to uh, focus on are the euglenia and kinetoplastids. The euglenia are mixotrophs, which means that they can switch back and forth between different metabolic strategies to obtain nutrients and energy. They have an eye spot that helps to detect light, and they have a pellicle, which are tough protein bands 
attached to the cytoskeleton that gives the cell some flexibility. And you can see that really well in this picture here. You can see these bands of the cytoskeleton here. And this picture shows you that eye spot. And they actually have photoreceptor cells that allow them to detect light. And then they can either swim towards it or away from it, depending on what the light is coming from. And the other type of euglenozoans are the kinetoplastids. And they have kinetoplasts, which is how they get their name, which is another type of modified mitochondria that consists of several or has several circular DNA structures associated with them. An example of the kinetoplastids are trypanosomes, which are human parasites that have an insect intermediate. So that could mean something like a tick or a mosquito. One example of a kinetoplastid is the Trypanosoma brucei, which is shown in this picture here. This is a human parasite transmitted via the tsetse fly, and it can cause African sleeping sickness, which can lead to severe fatigue, coma, and may even be fatal. And these are the, um, the protists right here. So to review the supergroup Excavata, can be divided into three separate subgroups. You have the diplomonads, the parabasalids, and the euglenozoans. The euglenozoans can further be broken down into euglenia and kinetoplastids.